That is cool. That is tough. Ha, snaps right back. All right, guys, today we're talking about a Centium PCTG. Not PETG, PCTG. This is a new wonder material from a Centium. It's got isotropic strength, meaning the Z-axis adhesion is actually a tiny bit better than the X and Y. And this means you will not have to worry about any kind of layer adhesion issues. I'm telling you, it's insane. PCTG contains all of the qualities that we enjoyed PETG while also providing several distinct advantages. PCTG offers increased toughness, more impact strength, and more clarity, making it an excellent substitute for PETG and even a substitute for polycarbonate in many situations. The terephthalate polyester family, which includes PETG, also includes a lesser known but also glycol modified copolyester, which is PCTG. Now it is very similar to PETG in application and molecular structure, but PCTG has higher chemical resistance, a larger range of printing temperatures, which I'll get into in a second, and increased durability. Now these qualities make PCTG easier to work with, it's almost like printing PLA, while also providing the same safety and recyclability as PETG. From an aesthetic standpoint, PCTG offers a matte or glossy finish depending on the print temperature. That's right, you can get clear and shiny or you can get a matte finish just by changing your nozzle temperature. So another thing that makes this unique is its superior IZOD impact resistance. This means it can withstand way higher impact than similar filaments while still maintaining its tensile strength and heat resistance. Now, while PETG is super popular among all the maker community, you should definitely consider trying the exact same prints in this material here. It's truly amazing uh, for anything you wanna do as a general purpose filament. If you're looking for something tough, super easy to print and still affordable, it's only 40 bucks for 750 grams right now in January or about $50 a kilo. Best of all, it's made right here in the USA out in Texas by Ascentium. So here's the box for the two and a half kilo and here's the box for the 750 grams. Now I'll show you the spool. It comes in this nice thick plastic vacuum packed bag. And uh, if this does come without the seal, don't worry about it. We do dry this, we keep it in a nice cold environment, but you don't really have to. It's not nearly as hygroscopic as things like nylon or other materials. Um, and yeah, very, very cool stuff. So that's 750 grams. And by the way, we're making comparison videos with all sorts of these different filaments and everything like that. So let us know in the comments below what kind of testing you wanna see us take this up against what other filament or what type of tests, et cetera. Let us know. We definitely read every comment and love it. While you're down there, you might as well subscribe if you haven't already. So let's talk about where you're actually gonna see this material used in the real world. It's a perfect starting point for fixtures since it's super easy to print. I mean, it's literally like PLA. It's also machinable and finishable in a variety of different ways. It can print in an open air printer without any problems. You don't need a heated chamber and you'll see it used for all kinds of things like handheld tools, gauges, location fixtures, general assembly fixtures, check sockets for prosthetics. And it's also unaffected by humidity. So drying isn't that big of an issue and hydrolytic resistance is very good. So you can use it in water and underwater and things like that. It's also strong enough for lightly loaded fixtures. And there's also total range of colors available if you need to color code in your shop. It's also very good just as a general purpose filament with really good toughness, high optical clarity so you can get clear prints uh, and all the while it prints like butter. I can't stress that enough. This is probably the easiest material I've ever printed in. Uh, PLA, it's coming for you. All right, so let's get right into what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? First off, you gotta have a nozzle that goes up to 250 to 270C. Uh, so just about any machine can print it. If you got an Ender 3, a CR10, or a FunMat HT, or an Aon M2, you can print this, and it prints as easily as PLA. On the bed, you need about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius. And for bed adhesive, our nanopolymer adhesive actually works fantastic on every surface we've tried. I, I can't even believe this stuff works for everything, uh, except for POM and polypropylene. Um, we only designed it for Peak and Ultim and it just works. It, I, I'm, I'm still blown away to this day how well it holds everything down. Now, as far as a heated chamber go, once again, you do not need a heated chamber. Just like PLA, it prints fantastic in open 
air. Now I have noticed there are some different things with the cooling fan and I'll talk that about that in just a minute. Now, as far as speeds go, much like PLA, anywhere from 40 to 80 millimeters a second and even faster. On the HSE from Essentium, they're printing this stuff at 500 to 800 millimeters per second. Yes. 500 to 800, that's almost a meter per second. That's right, yeah. The HSE is an insane machine with linear motors and all kinds of stuff. Definitely check them out. We got a few other videos on that machine. Now, as far as drying, uh, we do dry this ourselves. We keep it in a low humidity environment, um, but it doesn't uptake nearly as much water as many other materials, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Now, if you do need a full drying kit, we've got an entire kit available on our site. Uh, from the vacuum chamber to the ovens, and that's basically all you need. So we put together exactly what we use in our shops so that you can do it the same way we do. And we also have metal spools, which come in handy if you want to dry it at higher temperatures. But once again, for this, you don't really need that too much. Your standard print dry should get the job done. Now, when it comes to basic material specifications, you're looking at a glass transition temperature of about 76 Celsius, with a melting point around 202 Celsius, giving it an HDT or heat deflection temperature around 76 Celsius right at that glass transition point. Now, let's get into real quick some basic strength specs. With this material, you're looking at an ultimate tensile strength of about 44 megapascals on the X and Y orientation, so when it's printed flat on the bed like that. And guess what? 44 on the X and the Y, you get 45 megapascals on the Z and the X when you print it up like that. That's right, it's actually stronger in the Z axis according to the testing. Insanity, I love it. This material is seriously awesome. The tensile modulus is around 1800 megapascals, the flexural modulus is about 1780 megapascals, and uh, we've got all the rest of the data available on our site and data sheets at visionminer.com slash data. So you can find the tensile modulus, elongation, impact strength, all that stuff on the website. By the way, if this video is helpful to you so far, please hit that like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm realize that our content is great and valuable and you like it and you want more of it. Uh, and you might as well subscribe while you're down there as well because we got a ton of these videos and a lot more videos on the way. But first, let's talk about some specific environmental factors. Again, this is a great general purpose filament uh, with really good toughness, solvent resistance, uh, very similar to PETG, which is very resistant to almost everything. It's kind of a wonder material that people don't know about. Um, super high optical clarity, so you can make clear prints. And it's super easy to print. So if you're doing jigs and fixtures, or orthotics and prosthetics, or prototypes, even consumer goods, uh, and things like part trays, it's really, really good for that. Now, as far as electrical properties go, PETG is commonly used as an insulator. And while we don't have the specific data yet on dielectric properties for this material, it should work very, very well as an electrical insulator as well. Next, we've got biocompatibility, certifications, and sterilization. Now, unfortunately, right now, you're not gonna use this for implants or medical tools, as it's a bit too low temperature to be sterilized in most methods. And of course, it doesn't have a ton of certifications right now, as it's actually pretty new. They formulated this themselves, and there's not really many materials like it. But I do expect to see more of those to come in the coming months and years. Now, while we're at it, let's check out some example parts real quick. Over here, we've got the vases that we've done in every single material, just to show you the surface quality and sort of the surface finish. Now, these were all printed on the FunMat HT, so the texture you're seeing in here, a little bit of salmon skin, is from the way the drivers work. And every, most printers have this, some don't, some use different motion systems, so you get really, really, really just fine movement, but it's to be expected with a clear filament to see a little bit of that texture. Now, if I stick my finger in here, you can actually see my finger and that's that optical clarity coming through. We're gonna do a future video where we actually try to print clear as we can and we'll show the matte finish and the clear um, and the shiny and everything in that video, so make sure you're subscribed. But overall, beautiful part, very strong. Oh, I can't wait to break these. We're about to break these and burn them in just a second, so make sure you stay here for a minute longer. We got this thing. This is a filament spool holder for two and a half kilo or five kilo spools. And we actually made this a while ago. This thing unscrews and we were just starting to play with this material. And, uh, you know, this printed, I believe I actually printed flat like that. Now, normally, you know, depending how much, you know, torsion is going on, 
uh, we would have printed this in a different orientation or different pieces, but we didn't have to worry about it with PCTG because of that Z layer axis adhesion. Absolutely insane. When I print it, I don't have to worry about the orientation because it's literally just as strong in every direction. Blows my mind still to this day. Those guys over at Ascentium are doing some amazing material science work and they're coming out with some really cool material. So definitely stay tuned. We're gonna have all the updates for you here. Uh, this thing has worked out great just for doing some of our open printers and using it when we need to re-spool onto our metal spools and just a handy dandy little thing. This might actually be available in our store sometime. Don't hold your breath, but let us know if you want it in the comments below. Next, I've got this firearm. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a rubber band gun, uh, but it turned out great. This printed in one piece, one single piece, and it's a fully actuating slide and you've got this part down here, which moves, and there was a little bit of support in here, and it all came out, and it works great. And you stick a rubber band in here somehow, and then it, it hooks down there, and you can load it up, and it's a pretty cool little thing. Break yourself, you know. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, Welts Woodworks and 3D Printing. I think if you Google that, you should be able to find these things. Super fun, really, really cool, very good. Uh, moving right along, we've got these sample bars. Now we have these in every material. And if you need to test this material with your solvent or your acids or your heat or your temperatures, or if you just want to feel to see how it compares to some other materials, give us a call. Uh, we've got these available in a variety of materials. We'll talk to you about your application and we'll send you a few different samples so you can compare and test as needed. Very, very cool stuff. We're gonna burn these and break these here in just a moment. So actually, let's go right to that now. We're going to uh, burn and break some parts. Now, safety first, get the safety glasses as some of these materials will, in fact, explode when you break them. This is the 200 pound Gorilla Thumb Test. And I'm just going to push my thumbs into the side. Now we're gonna see if it deflects, if it comes back, which I can already tell it is. I can't wait to do this. We're also gonna see when it breaks, if it breaks, where it breaks, how it breaks. Is it breaking a straight line down the side or across the layers? You know, is it isotropic? Is it, you know, stringing? What's it doing? So let's get into that. Let's just go ahead and smash this vase. Here we go. Right off the bat, you can see that layer adhesion doing really good. God, this is great. Got a little bend in there, but it hasn't broken at all. I'm just gonna really, I'm just gonna go all the way. Oh my God. <laughs> you see how far that went in? Oh my God, let me do it on this other one just to, just to do that again, because that is cool. That is tough. Ha, snaps right back. Oh, that's so cool. All right, anyway, let's go back to the broken one. So it busted in, and as you can see, it looks like an injection molded part. Um, this, this, I don't think there's any breaks across the Z axis. This is, this line over here is getting close, but it's not, it's going straight down through multiple layers. It's not going along the layer lines. We have all these other breaks that are straight up and down. I mean, this shows how good that layer adhesion is. If you've seen all our other videos on the filaments, uh, you'll notice that this is a bit unique. Up at the top here, obviously you get the full deflection. You can squeeze this part in and go snaps back right to where it was. This is printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height on a 0.4 nozzle with 0.6 extrusion width. Uh, just so you know the specs. And dude, I mean, it comes out beautifully. God, oh, it's so tough. I'm gonna try to rip it. Let's see if we can get that rip. Oh yeah, and it just breaks isotropically. Like there's no, it's not a Z layer thing. Let's see if we can get some Z layer. No, a little bit. No, it's still going, stair stepping down. Uh, that is very cool. That is something, I mean, the nylon did that. Nylon six actually didn't even break. It just like folded into itself and then I tore it apart. Now that was with 30% fan. This was with 30% fan, but I'm gonna ask Jay to bring in the ones with no fan and other fans right here. The hands of Jay and Bear once again. I love it, I love it. So we've got no fan and we've got 20% fan. Now what happened was, we noticed up here, it started drooping a little bit. And that's something I've really noticed with PCTG. When you print it and you use no cooling fan, it will droop. Even if you have say 30% infill and you're doing those top layers, it sort of drops down into the little holes of the infill. Now you add 20 to 30% fan and it doesn't do that. And it behaves just like PLA. Uh, so good note to have. <clears throat> now, because this was with no fan, I'm gonna do the same 
test. I'm just gonna see uh, how it breaks with no cooling. Oh, look at that. I completely, it's crushed. It's crushed. Oh, dude, no fan at all. I can't break it. It's not breaking. Here, let me tear off the top, see if I can just, let's make this vase look like it did before. Except a little ruffled. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I don't want to do it. I can't even do it. That is cool. So no cooling and you don't even get the break. For a clear material that prints like PLA and you can get in any color and is transparent, that's really good. This is a, a dude. Z adhesion, that is an amazing, amazing material. All right, let's move on to the next test, which is the sample bars. I'm gonna stick this sample bar right here into this vise, right down to the logo, and we're just gonna bend it back to see how the material reacts, how it breaks, if it shatters, if it bends, if it won't break, if it's super tough. We're gonna to see what happens. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna bend it back. Ah, look at that. So. It held the form at the end of the bend, but it did not break, it did not shatter, it did not crack. I'm going back and forth like this and it's not even, it's not even breaking. I could eventually shear this out. This is like PVDF or polypropylene, where it just, it doesn't break, it's almost self-healing. It's not self-healing, but you get what I'm saying. Wow, all right. Interesting, look at that. By the way, on our online store, we also do have this in black color right now. Uh, and definitely hit us up if you want some other stuff, but 40 bucks, this is some, in this is, I mean, you can't get this 40 bucks in PLA, dude. This is insane. Very, very cool. All right, and then I managed to tear it apart with that torsion. And I mean, clearly it, it just looks like a solid bar of material, <laughs> not a 3D printed part with a bunch of layer lines that are breaking apart. Uh, that is cool. Oh, look at that optical clarity too. Look, you can see through it like very, very clearly. You can see the hole behind the letters. Dude, the stuff that you can do with this, I swear. Um, man, what do you guys want us to do with it? Leave a comment below. What's something we should do? What's something we should break or burn or whatever? Speaking of burning, let's get right into the burning and flame section of this video. I'm gonna put this all over here. I'm gonna get the piece of this. Oh my God, that's tough. All right, I'm gonna burn this. Now, before I do, I'm gonna pull out the trusty handy dandy Bofa Print Pro 2 with the flex arm that I can conveniently position right over whatever work I'm doing. I like using this in the shop for soldering, sometimes for grinding to soak up those particles, or if we're just having fun burning stuff, you know, it comes in handy. We also got the Pro 3, which is a fully circulating system. So you can go into a heated chamber and back into the filter and back into the heated chamber and actually maintain that temperature as well as the Pro 4 and a variety of other filtration systems. A little bit of peace of mind, especially when you're doing fumy materials like PVDF or nylon, you won't even smell it in the office. It's great to have. So I'm gonna turn this puppy on right here. Then I'm gonna take this part, use this as a drip tray just in case. And we're gonna see with 10 seconds of open flame, if this thing lights on fire, if it melts, if it drips, if it self extinguishes, we're gonna see what happens with some direct flame exposure. Let's do it. One, two, Three, four, five, six. And we have ignition. We have ignition and it went out when it hit the ground. Uh, let me get a bigger piece. This is super thin, so we're gonna do the, the solid bar here in just a second, see how that reacts. But for now, as a super thin material exposed to open flame, three, four, five seconds before it totally fails, and then about seven or eight seconds before it lights on fire and it drips, hardcore drips. Definitely not something you want exposed to a lot of open flame. <laughs> That's that 76 degree glass transition temperature right there for you. Now, if I play around with that, it smells sweet. What is that? Bubble gum, grapefruit? What is that? You smell that? Now you can't smell it over there because the fume extractor is doing its job, but yeah, it's almost like a fruity smell. Weird. I'm gonna ask him how much 
damage that did. Anyway, uh, very, very cool. Uh, now let's burn the solid part and see what happens to that, how it reacts. I'm gonna start on the letters right here so we can see how uh, fine details just react to a little bit of open flame. And let's go from there. Here we go. It's bubbling. It's drippy. Oh, now it's melted. That's molten. That's molten right there. All right, as you can see, the T in the CTG is um, has flattened itself out. And I can wipe it off right there. If you need to do it, erase letters on something. See the letter? No. I'm being facetious. It's good. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, now let's try lighting the actual part on fire and seeing how that works. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. It's on fire. We have ignition. Full ignition. Oh, God, that dripping, dude. That's dangerous. Oh, dude, yeah, and that's still dripping, dripping. So if I go like that, you can really see. Yeah, it smells sweet. It's uh, interesting. Now, if you need something that's flame resistant, flame retardant, we got a bunch of filaments like that. We specialize in high temperature, tough thermoplastics for 3D printing and uh, flame retardant and UL94 V0 flame FST, flame smoke toxicity ratings. Uh, we have a lot of those op as options. So definitely let us know if that's what you need. Check out our website. Uh, very, very fun at times. Like say, this is the easiest material I've printed in the last four years. Just like PLA, it prints super easy. You get better layer adhesion than anything else on the market that I've seen. And uh, frankly, it's really cool. Printing clear is great. It comes in black as well. And uh, when you buy this on our website, by the way, we actually give you 3% back on every order. So you can use those credits back towards glue or nozzles, adhesive, uh, or or machines or more material, whatever you want, but just our way of giving back. Anyway, that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments below what kind of tests you wanna see us do between this material and other materials, and we'll be back with more very soon. Thank you for watching, have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.